from the Schmoes No Network Studios in Los Angeles, California, it's time for Guilty Movie Pleasures. And now, here are your hosts, two of the guiltiest cats I know, Josh McCuga and Steve Simone. What's what up, up Schmoville? Oh, man. <laughs> did it again. Yes, we did. Two for two. I think uh, what's nice about that is you are a big professional wrestler fan. I, yeah. myself, am not. But that's like, I feel like we're getting some pro wrestling in there. Yeah, it's the only that taught me how to behave as a child. <laughs> what, <laughs> wrestling? Pro wrestling, yeah. I think w- what really did it for me in pro wrestling is I, I don't think I could have done the actual wrestling part because I would always just be flopping around. But the actual, like... It, Theatrics of it was the what I would be more excited yeah, about. Yeah, I prefer old school pro wrestling where yeah. a guy like Mean Gene Okerlund would interview somebody and then they would just tell you what they were going to do. Right. <laughs> right. Except now the wrestlers hold the microphone and the guy they want to beat up's right there and they're like, oh. You think you're going to beat me up? This is how I'm going to beat you up. And the legendary and the, hosts are the best part, like Jerry the, the Madman Lawler or whatever. Jerry the King, yeah. Jerry the King and all that. And, you know, Andy Kaufman coming in there. And all oh, that's the best. Awesome thing. Tony Schiavone down here at the Omni in Atlanta. <laughs> yeah. It was so great. It's great. Speaking now, of great, this movie, this week's movie is great. Well, let's just say this up top. Schmoville, you guys put together a poll on the Schmoville fan site on Facebook, yep. which which we get. What do you think your average number of notifications on Facebook? Of a million. Schmoville? Easily it's 40 a million. to 50 a day. A day. We're not complaining about that. It's I love incredible. it. I'm very lonely, so keep on communicating. <laughs> when I click into Facebook and I see that little number up by the little world, by the globe thing, yeah. I get super excited. I'm like, oh, guess who matters? This yeah, guy. <laughs> this guy. All because of you, Schmoville. So thank you. Uh, I will say this also. Uh, we've had some like a minor little issue with iTunes. Uh, so if you click on something, it might send you another thing. Guilty movie pleasure still does exist on itunes uh it's not gone anywhere it's just you got to kind of like search around us a little bit it's going to be fixed don't Don't worry about it rate us five stars tell all your friends subscribe give some comments even if it's like i hate josh's face steve's way better looking do that i'm fine with it Uh, (laughs) you can't even say that without laughing (laughs) 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 okay okay nobody's ever going to say that (laughs) and uh please listen to uh steve and i I went on steve's podcast good times and i had the oh, most dude, that fun. was awesome. So all the people on Twitter who've been who've been uh, tweeting at us and stuff, I really really appreciate. It. We love hearing from you guys, the fans. If you notice, we always try and respond or at least favorite your tweet. So absolutely. Again, thank you. Today's movie, big time. Again, Shmo will put the poll together. You guys voted. You wanted Predator. You're getting Predator. Yeah, and I think I I just want to say this because uh because a lot of people are like, is this a guilty movie? Why should we feel guilty about it? With it? The way I look at it, guys, we just want to hang out and have laughs with you and have yeah. fun. Mm-hmm. So this is your show. So if you guys have movies you want us to talk about, let us know. Yeah. And then it's just our job to watch them and share them, share our thoughts with you and try to make it entertaining. Yeah, and try and make you laugh and each other laugh as much as humanly possible. It's, uh, you know, it can be guilty. It may not be guilty. Yeah, Listen, I don't know. Any, some, one person's guilty movie pleasure is, is another person's Oscar winner. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, we're not speaking of Oscars. I have no idea how Predator didn't win one. I, it's ridiculous. So many fantastic performances. All good acting. Phenomenal. This is like the platoon of action movies. <laughs> really is. Dude, the best is I. One was I hadn't seen it from beginning to end. Like you know what's so great about these movies, and this is a constant theme that's yeah. coming up, is that many of these movies people choose. They're always on TV. Always. It's one of those things. They're so awesome that everybody loves them. Everybody's right. like, no, we're going to put on Predator for the millionth time. Once we get to a point where we are controlling the world, like we talked about yesterday, we will have a GMP channel. It will just be a channel you can get on DirecTV. Time oh, on that cable. would be amazing. And and you guys, we just pick the movies each awesome week. Awesome movies. Awesome movies. And, and boom, they're there only for you. But that's somewhere down the line. Anyhow, go ahead. But um, it's been a while since I saw it from beginning yeah. to end. And that's one of the things. It's like I would pick this up anywhere in the movie and sit down and watch it, but it's been so rare from the beginning to the end. Right. And I forgot this opens up with the UFO. It does. A sp- like a spaceship coming in right around Earth, and then it just cuts to – to because you don't know. We're like, oh, okay, Predator, whatever. I mean, had you, ne- had you never seen a trailer – Back yeah. in 86 or whatever and know nothing about the movie and there's a UFO that comes out. You're like, oh, this is a space movie. Yeah. Right. And then it opens up with army stuff. It's <laughs> so cool. Any movie that opens up, like you said, army stuff. Gets that's me. when you know it's going to be it's awesome. awesome. Yeah. And it shows all the tough guys on the helicopter. Yes. And then who's the last to get off Schwarzenegger because he has to take time to light up his stogie. In in a silhouette. So great. all you see. And you know that that was Schwarzenegger. That wasn't like a director's choice. Right. That was definitely not written in the script. It couldn't be because Schwarzenegger. Snyder loves cigars more yeah, than anything. Yeah, that's how awesome he is. Yeah. But, it, you know, the, the helicopters land, all the dust is everywhere. Have you, look, personally, I've never been around a helicopter. So I have. I, oh, you have? 
right? Yeah, I've done shows for the military. It's the best thing ever. <laughs> is it really? Please yeah. go on. Describe what a helicopter life is like. Oh, it's so loud. Yeah. Like, you can't hear anything. And then you get a tummy ache, but you can't let anybody know because you're always like, <laughs> because you're going up and down and you smell fumes. And then, like, sometimes there's, like, oil leaking in helicopters and gas. And they're like, <laughs> don't worry about the oil leak. Be worried when it stops leaking. Because all the guys, <laughs> helicopter pilots, especially, like, down in, like, real war zones, they yeah, all yeah. have a screw loose. They're yeah, awesome. Sure. Yeah, yeah. They're like us with man skills. <laughs> they're so much fun. <laughs> like, my one buddies were on a tour in Iraq. And then, like, the sure. helicopter pilot crew, they were all, like, Guido dudes from Jersey. Yeah, I love so it. So one guy was, like, trying to act tough. Like, one of the comedians is like, I never would get sick on this. They're like, oh, yeah? Panama! <laughs> the guy's just throwing up everywhere. Because <laughs> they took the blades, like, perpendicular through, like, snake runs. The that best. is unreal. I, I just want to give a shout-out to all the people out there uh, in our armed forces. Thank sure. you for doing what you do. Yeah. Thank and, you. And, and thank you for inspiring such awesome movies. Really. Yes. Really and truly. Because what you do in real is actually way more important than inspiring awesome movies. But what you've done... Is, has spawned generations of guilty movie pleasures one and just simply awesome characters like yeah. I, you you know that these guys are based on actual dudes they, they have to be it's i never even thought about that right yeah, you, that's true you get this grizzled general coming off and he's like god damn and okay commando schwarzenegger's name john matrix and this one dutch yeah dutch is the man's Code name, name. Dutch. <laughs> Come on. You and he, son of a bitch. <laughs> every one that of them has the great scene. nicknames. We all yeah. want a cool nickname in our life. We all want it. I would, Every Makuga has the same nickname. Cougs. Okay. <laughs> we do, none of us. All 100,000 Makugas. The same nickname. Uh, I just, I've just i always wanted to like separate myself and have an awesome nickname like yeah. Dutch. I wish I had a nickname that was better than, hey, Chubby. <laughs> 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 I'm just chubby. <laughs> How'd you get that nickname? Too many cookies. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love that no matter what, as soon as your high five goes up, you say Panama. It's great. It's, the best. it's, it's incredible. So you get Schwarzenegger. So again, we see UFO and then boom, they're at this like base camp, right? In yeah. some like it could be Valverde. They could be in Valverde. Yeah, it's somewhere in the tropical jungle. I think right. somewhere in the Amazon. Sure. But just at the top, I want to say that right away, that's how you know this is one of the best movies ever. Because it takes sci fi and blends it with action. Right. And of all of Schwarzenegger's movies have that like funny yeah. comedy element to it. <laughs> yes, home run. And all at, the elements. at that point in his career, they uh, they just had a guy sitting in a room by himself thinking of one liners, liners to plug into scripts. Yeah, that yeah. guy didn't do anything I else. I wish I could have that job. Oh, wouldn't that be awesome? It's like the guy that invents the pizza at Pizza Hut. He's like, we're gonna shove bacon and cheese in the crust. They're like, I'm listening. <laughs> Go best. on. Mm -hmm. um, the beautiful part about this movie is okay, as opposed to Commando, where it's Schwarzenegger versus the world. It's Schwarzenegger and his With like his four, team. his four crazy there's a, buddies. No, five. There's this. Oh, that's remember. Right. There's a crew of six. Okay, so you have the Native American dude that my favorite, Billy. Billy is your favorite. Yeah, uh, and he he can like smell what the rock is cooking, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got he's got like the, the warrior spirit where he can yeah. sense things that our five senses can't tell you. Right. He it's knew. Like, it's kind of like Last of the Mohicans when they would like run through the jungle, you know, and like take out the British soldiers because the Indians, the Native Americans, knew how the how the how the woods were won, how, yeah. how they how they saw it, and that was Johnny. Spirit guides. No matter where it was in 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 the uh, wilderness, Johnny yes. knew how to handle himself, and yeah, that's why Dutch kept him around. And then he had uh, Jesse the Body Ventura. Yep. Who was basically like that drunk buddy that you hung around simply so if you got in a bar fight, you knew you he had your back no matter what. Because yeah. the body, he didn't care. He's shoving tobacco in his mouth. He's yeah. swearing. He's talking about broads. It doesn't This will make you a sexual tyrannosaurus. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tremendous. Like, it's just so good because they get in. Okay, so it opens up with the spaceship. Boom. boom. And then it shows them all getting off the chopper. Right, boom. And then there's the general in there, and he's like, Dutch, I had to call you in. Yeah. And then you see Apollo Creed. I'm like a six-year-old. I'm just going to oh, refer to Carl always. Weathers as Apollo Creed. Always. Is in the other room, and he was like, you son of a bitch. Because Schwarzenegger and Apollo Creed knew each other from missions in the past. Right. Because you later see that they had the same, I think it was an Army Ranger lighter that yeah. they got in 71. Right. Which means they were badasses. Badass. Yeah, like Vietnam-era Rangers. Forget yeah. it. Thank you, guys. And he gets so excited to see him. It's like when you saw your brother for the first time in a long time, you're like, Ben! <laughs> oh, 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 it's so good to see you. Dude, and the best, then they go right into the feet of strength. If that they doesn't say to... guilty pleasure, I don't know who you yeah, are. Yeah, when it's... they match up the biceps. And you, Come and, on. And... This desk job's making you weak. <laughs> 
<laughs> Too much paperwork. And you know McTiernan was like, all right, now we got to go for the punching of the bicep. And, and Apollo Creed and Schwarzenegger were just standing there just like, how long do we have to hold this flex as long as we friggin' want to? So great. My buddy uh, Chris Bell made this great documentary okay. on steroids called Bigger, Stronger, Faster. Okay. And he's got a scene where he got to shake, get a picture of Schwarzenegger doing that. Like that? Yeah, the best ever. And also a uh, um, uh, was... There was an homage to that in MacGruber. Yeah, oh, of course. Of course. Which we, we have to do We MacGruber. will talk MacGruber without a doubt. Um, so they, they hold it and they're like, you're doing the man thing, right? Because this is the, the largest cl- collection of testosterone on the planet at this point. Like, you well, you can't. know what's interesting? Like, because we'll keep, I guess we'll keep on talking plot point by plot point. Sure. But what I thought was interesting, I was like, oh, this was the, um, they even flat out mentioned, they used the term expendables in this. Do they really? I didn't hear that. Oh, yeah. I picked up on it because they were like. Okay, so Carl Weathers reconnects with Schwarzenegger. Carl Weathers now is a CIA op. Mm -hmm. And the general tells Schwarzenegger, we need you. You're the best. We need you and your crew because um, it was an ambassador or— He was going into the jungle, uh, and they lost him. Yeah, they went over the wrong border by accident, got shot down. They're captured by rebels, so they have to go save this guy. Right. And then it, they let you know that Schwarzenegger is such a good dude that he, he was off with the CIA. Right. And he was like, we're, he goes, we, we're at like an extraction team where we rescue people. We're not assassins. Right. Do you remember he made that point clear? Because yeah. I had another job that he had turned down. Because he's a, he's a killer, but he doesn't want to be a killer. He only kills he's if he has to. Right. He, he's kind of like a, a martial artist in like the, the good part of like the guy that trained like Miyagi's buddies would probably be Schwarzenegger's buddy. Right. Because they only fight when they have They're to fight. They're not the Cobra Kai. No, they are not the Cobra Kai. Right. So, so now Schwarzenegger, he's, he's got to be a hero. Yeah. There's a group of people that were shot down. They're captured by bad guys. Nobody else can save them because they're behind uh, the wrong border. They're right. well behind enemy lines. And Schwarzenegger's like, all right, man, let's go do this. Listen, Schwarzenegger's group is literally human camouflage. They never get caught. They go into these places. They extract people and it's zing, zang, zong. Done. Yeah, so cool. But then you know something's up yeah. because Carl Weathers has to go with him. And he's like... No, we yeah. only use our six man crew, and they're like, "Nope, you need to set." Which was kind of like an insult, I think, to know. Carl Weathers and, and Apollo Creed, is because they were buddies at one point. So now, why he doesn't trust them, I don't get. Oh, but then we but soon find out. We get there, but we he's soon like, find out. And then you get to that point, and so next thing you know, you're back in a helicopter. Yeah, and they're playing that awesome song. That song is incredible, uh, it, dude. It's so good. It this movie really doesn't stop. It doesn't. It's a, well, because it's it's a ticking clock. That's yeah, yeah, the best yeah. part. It only takes place in one day. And listen, if you go back in time and watch any great action movies, they all, the great ones, all take place in a day. I never picked up on that. Die Hard, day. Die Hard with a Vengeance, day. <laughs> Commando, of 12, 13 hours. They are, it was a, right. a literal like, ticking clock that he had on his arm. Right. This one all took place continuous. You never had a break from the action. Speed all, never took place from the action. Hmm. When you you know when you put that all together, it's it's when an action movie co- goes over yeah. like an extended period of time that it really starts to drag a little bit. Yeah, dude, this was awesome. Yeah, so they're on this thing, and this is when when the body puts the chew in his mouth. And listen, if you've never tried chewing tobacco, I don't I don't personally recommend it. I know you really enjoy it. Yeah, I'm trying to quit. It's yeah. been a couple of months. Yeah, it's tough. Like the first he was chewing loose leaf, loose looked le- like he had a little red man or Levi Garrett loose mm-hmm. leaf chaw. The first time I had ever had uh, chaw. Was with my buddy Colin Redman. Coincidentally, was the first person I ever watched this movie. Wait, with. his last name was Redman. It was Redman. I yes. think that's what Jesse the Body may have been chewing. <laughs> I, I, that's what I'm hoping. Okay. So we went, and our buddy uh, Brian Spack worked at the Mini Mart, so he just sold tobacco to all underage, underage kids. kids. It was awesome, right? Way to go, Brian. Oh, it's great. American hero. <laughs> he is a classic in our town. Classic. His mom stole our bong. It was pretty funny. Yeah. His Panama. Mo- <laughs> <laughs> so. So we, the first, I remember it was uh, Easter, it was like the Friday before Easter, so Good Friday, so we had it off. Nice. So we're at the Redmond's place. Obviously, we'd, I'd watched Predator before. This is the first time I tried Cha. I put the Cha in my mouth and I was like, eh, this isn't that good. Face turns green. I puked for about an hour and a half. That was mo- the most fucked up I've ever been on any kind of anything up to really? that point in my life. I was yeah. so green. His mom comes home from work and she looks at my face. She was like, are you okay? No. I'm not, not feeling that good. Call my mom. Yeah, please. I need get to get picked up. <laughs> I have too much red man chaw. I didn't say that. Uh, and then I tried snuff like a few years later. Again, puke. So those are my only two times You're trying tobacco. Ducky. But if you are in a chopper and Body Ventura offers you cha and you're going into a jungle to try and rescue an ambassador you take the cha yeah right or, yeah i would have yeah he made it look so cool it too did. yeah because he just big plug threw it right in there yeah and then i forget what apollo creed said but then jesse the body spit right on his boot you remember that because <laughs> none of schwarzenegger's teams likes 
Weathers at this point. Yeah, they know they know something's up. Because in typical Apollo Creed fashion, he's kind of like the stiff. He's the suit. Nobody really trusts Carl Weathers, Apollo Creed, because he's not part of the team. He hasn't been in the in the shit as long as they have, and in in the same mindset where they all did a blood brother oath of we're not going to be. Yeah, killers. that's uh, yeah, that's what I think. Like these guys are just a crew. This is their team. Right. This is what they are. Now they have to go rescue somebody, and here's. The, uh, the cousin Oliver from the Brady Bunch <laughs> yeah. in season four when the plot starts to drag. You got to invite somebody in. But it's good because Did then. Did you just compare cousin Oliver and the Brady Bunch to Apollo Creed? Yeah, because they just glommed them on a little bit. So, so also we haven't mentioned the character, the guy that she keeps trying to tell the bad jokes about big pussies. Oh, yeah, that guy was kind of fantastic. Yeah, he was. Uh, 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 is that right? It's big. And Johnny never says a word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or Billy never, Billy says, a never word. says a word. And then they have the other guy who, by the way, the guy that keeps trying to tell the jokes is Shane Black, who wrote. Uh, no Iron Man way. 3. Yeah, that's Shane Black. He, Get out of here. Yeah, he, he's like invented writing the, the, the. Wait, how did he sign up for the best life ever? He got to be in Predator, in Predator. and then write the best movies ever? Yes. He, he just, he hit jackpot, dude. Genius. Did you ever know <laughs> you were my hero? That was originally meant for Bette Midler, but we're going to sing it to Shane Black. Yeah, why not, well man? Yes, he absolutely. deserves it. <laughs> so we we get there. So then finally they're in there, and then those that, those lights bl- start blinking in the helicopter, yep. right? It's time to go. I, I want a light like that in my life, right, where you are sitting around, and, you know, instead of somebody calling you or something, it's just a blinking light in your apartment, and then it hits go, and you just you open the door, and you sling out. Like your yeah. apartment is somewhere up in the sky, and you get to parachute anywhere you want. Yeah, that- so cool. And then, you know, what was even cooler. These guys didn't parachute out. Oh. Remember, they took the zip line down? The, right down. They fast rope down. And that's... That's in Seal Team that, Six. That's you, you, because yeah. you're in the cover of night. They turn off all the radar. Yeah, they, so go, they cool. drop down. Turn off all the lights. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what I want to talk about. Once we get through the whole movie, I do want to talk about how there's real people that really know how to do this. Yes. And that's what's well, so we awesome. can go into it now because we keep. Well, dude, that's why I'm wearing this awesome Punisher shirt. The there was this guy. Yeah, there, was, there was this uh, real real guy named uh, uh, Chris Kyle. God bless his soul. Was like the coolest person ever. Okay. He was tougher than everybody in this movie combined, but in real life. Yeah. So you can, um, there's a clothing company called Forged. Okay. And you can go there and buy one of these cool shirts and all the money That's goes awesome to his shirt. family. Yeah. Oh, really? Chris mm-hmm. Kyle. Yeah. The, How top, did, the best person ever. Does he have a book or something that you yes, read? Yes. There's tons of them. Oh, really? There's really cool books out there. How, what's, uh, what are the books names? Uh, I, I think. Are they making a movie about this guy? Yeah, I think they are actually. Are you hey, in it? No, I think Clint Eastwood's directing it. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. God, real, awesome. real Navy SEALs. And like we've said before, when we talk command and all this stuff, there are there are guys that are actually doing this that make these guys look like pussies, really and truly. Yeah. Because these guys are like, doing fake stuff. These guys are literally doing this stuff. Yeah, that are so good. Like, that's why I get nervous talk, talking, even mentioning their names and stuff. I'm like, I'm not worthy to really mention because they're that for yeah. real. Because, like, I remember, like, when I was – I had the privilege. It really was a privilege to go overseas to entertain our troops. And then you mm-hmm. got to meet some of these guys. Sure. And then, of course, I'm seven. So yeah. I'm like, did you ever see Predator? <laughs> and, like, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it's so funny. <laughs> a lot of those guys, they grew up just like us. They're like, how do you think I got here? Yeah. I'm like, you actually lived the dream. But, like, they were talking so about, like, how st- the techniques and stuff they use in these movies aren't realistic. Right. And how, like, you can, you don't shoot the gun from the hip and all yeah. that stuff. Well. We would hope not. Yeah. You're not just and there's probably not really aliens hunting humans with, for sport in the jungle. <laughs> with one not. arm. The uh, the only problem, the only difference between real Navy SEALs and you and me is that we went, we just like ran through the woods and started kicking trees and these guys are actually running through and killing bad, bad guys. Yeah, the last time I went running through the woods, me and my little brother were looking for pornography. <laughs> <laughs> that, was a st- that was the stint of our Navy SEALism. Yeah. Yes. So Once you got to drink out of a canteen, it was awesome. <laughs> Did you ever do that when you were a kid? Like, give me a swig, it just tasted better, and everybody would drink out of the canteen. You're sweating, you're in like a tree fort that you sort of <laughs> the built. Best. Yeah. We, oh, God, those are such good things. And all of those those activities were inspired by movies, movies like, like this, this. Absolutely. like Predator and stuff. And we thought there was a Predator in the woods, and you did all that stuff. And I remember my brother and I were trying to make a bow and arrow out of sticks and wire after we saw this movie, but no yeah. real person can do that. Dude, th- no, that's what was so awesome. All right, yeah. so well, let's sorry. pick up. The so they, further so they take on the mission, they fast rope out, they start going through. Boom, what do they find? They find three human bodies skinned alive. Skinned alive. And then it turns out Schwarzenegger knew one of the guys, and they were a Green Beret team. Yeah. Badass mofos. Yeah. And he was like, who, what was it? Because I wanted to use the guy's name as a fake alley. So it was like Jim Toppers. Hopper. Yeah, Hopper. 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 And I was like, that'll be my new fake name at a bar. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jim Hopper. And people are like, that's vaguely familiar. Huh. So I, great. Do I know that name? 
So it lets you know if whatever got to these dudes, because at first you think it's the bad guys. Yes. You think it's the rebels that captured them. And you're like, because we still don't know. Again, if you have never seen a trailer to Predator and you are just going into the movie Cold Turkey, you have no idea what's going to happen. Yeah, that's what makes it so cool. Yeah. Like, I, I wish I had a time machine to go because I do remember seeing this in the theater. And when they you would saw cut, it in the theater. Yeah. Ooh. And they would cut back to the point of view of the Predator and stuff would be like in that. Um, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And it the was like signature. that heat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're like, what's happening? Yeah. What is it? And my little Predator's like, that's the Predator. That's the real Predator. <laughs> Schwarzenegger's not the Predator. He's the one that's actually being hunted. Like, my little brother always figured stuff out before me. And then my dad would just get stuff wrong. Wait till Apollo Creek punches him. Dad, dad I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, <laughs> so good. Your dad and your brother are like the best characters that come uh, on the, the show. I had the best uh, childhood ever. Awesome. So now, they, I say, so now they come in and let's just get to the point where they... They rescue the people who are all dead. Right. Kind of. But sort they take they out all the bad down. guys. Yeah. Oh, and, wait. and then they charge that camp. They, yes. re, they get to Which that camp. Which was awesome. And we think, listen, that's only 20 minutes into the movie. We're like, oh, right. okay, so well, they take out the camp. So what's next? But we now we get to... And yes. he's watching them, and he's recording their voices. Yeah, which notice? was interesting and creepy. Cool. Yeah. And again, if you notice, there's a ton of movies that have kind of stolen from Predator. So this is going to sound really lame, but in in the Hunger Games, there's a part that's sort of like the Predator kind of thing, where he's recording their voices. There's oh, these, like, yeah, mocking jays or whatever that are doing. Yeah, like, I thought the Hunger Games is great. Oh, it's great. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, but it's not Predator. It's not Predator. No. Uh, and then you you realize at at some point that. Uh, well, then they get there and they, they, I mean, when they blow up that camp, they're shooting awesome. everything. That's a commando moment. Yeah. Because they're spraying them with guns. So they've got every, and what we don't really see until you get to that camp is the gun that the body is carrying. He's got it. We know it's a Gatling gun, but we just don't know how amazing this Gatling gun is. Yeah. I have no idea how realistic that is. That is like literally a weed whacker of a weapon. If you could get close enough to say, like, you know, when you weed yeah, whack. It looks like something that should be mounted on a tank and Jesse, the body is just carrying <laughs> just it through the woods. Carrying it. And he, they're, they mow down an entire village of bad guys. Yeah, they Six take on out 150. Yeah, they take out all the bad guys. Yep. But then all the people that they wanted to save were dead. They dead. were already dead. But then you gone. find out the reason why Apollo Creed was there was because the CIA wanted to get all the information. Yeah. It was a it was an operation. It, was it wasn't really ops. a rescue. No, yeah, it, it wasn't really a rescue. And Schwarzenegger doesn't. He just rescues. We've been over that. Yeah. And then he was like, "You son of a bitch." You got me. Yeah. Yeah. And he was like, "This was a setup." Right. And he was like, "Come on, man." And I think that's the first time he says "expendable." Uh, I think he was like, "You're just an asset, an ex an expendable ex asset." And now we got the precursor to expendables. Do yeah. We know so then, that yes. But then, so instead of saving people, they take a a a, a hostage. hostage that girl because they figure she knows a lot more stuff than just the papers have. So now they have to go Coincidentally through the Coincidentally enough, the, the only good looking girl to survive the entire firefight was that girl. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she's acting like she doesn't speak English. Yep. Whatever. Uh, she's trying to play it hard to get. It's sort of like when you meet a girl in arcade when you're 12 yep. and she doesn't want to talk to you. But she really does. But she really inside. does want to talk to you. And like maybe your better looking friend like talks to the friend and then like you kind of like get Like your in. better looking friend named Josh. <laughs> And then you're just like, hey, let's hit the snack bar and wait for mom to pick me up. I'll be sitting on the curb. Come on, And then Steve. it's like, did you bun her? Did you French? <laughs> did you French? Are you guys going steady? Did you ask her to go with you? Um, so they, they take this girl hostage. Now, this is where this is where the, the script gets flipped. Because mm -hmm. up until now. This is when it becomes now, the best. The best. is now it's pretty much an action movie up until this point. A standard action Standard movie. action movie. Guns, an, an opposing army in a, in a jungle, in a country we've never heard of, trying to get people out of somewhere that we don't know. And we just we don't know who any of these people are. Standard action movie. Yeah. Whatever. But now we have this. Where yeah. the guy. Because every time. It, and then it cuts to his thing point of view yeah we still haven't seen the predator we've no. only seen him track well you them. can't even now when he's going to kill that one guy it's just it's like yeah. camouflage coming at you so now they take this girl and they're trying to get to the rendezvous point to get a chopper to get them out of there because yes. they've gotten all the information they're obviously still pissed but they still have to get out because they're on a bad side of town yep right it's kind of like did you guys ever brawl against rival high schools yeah, kind of. So there was this McDonald's on the border of our town, right? Uh -huh. And kids from two other high schools would go there after football games. Nice. And there was always a fight at this McDonald's. Okay. Well, those guys from South think they're hot, tough yeah, guys. South, Bayside, Upper St. <laughs> Clair, Mount Lebanon, Bethel Park all went to this uh, this McDonald's. It's and terrible. that was like the border that they crossed in yeah. Predator. Now they got to get out of there. And the CIA, they can't send helicopters over this border again because too, they're too far behind enemy exactly, lines. Exactly. Too far behind enemy lines. And Schwarzenegger didn't know that was going to happen. He had a yep. feeling, but he didn't know. So now they got to get and they got to tra track yeah, his Yeah, and chopper. they have to go through the worst way. You remember they were like, uh, this we have to go through the worst part of the jungle exactly. ever. Exactly. 
It's like when you walk down an alley and you're like, I shouldn't walk down this alley, yeah, but the, the only, only way, way out. Get, only yeah. Way to get out. And then that guy, Billy, starts getting bad vibes again. Yes. So good. He's, he's looking around the forest, you know, and we, anytime that you would go into the woods, you'd think you were Billy. Like you heard something. Oh, you yeah. You turned your head. You looked up into the trees. Like, I think it's coming down for you, right? Yeah, yeah. So, in, so now the whole crew is going whatever, and the first guy that gets killed is the guy that it makes the, the jokes about pussies and stuff. Right. Oh, He's yeah, the yeah, first yeah. one to get to just get smoked. Shane Black, because Shane Black had to get writing. I mean, he had to get busy dying so he could keep writing yeah, perfect yeah, action movies. So everybody freaks out. That girl starts screaming because his body just blows up. The predator comes running through. We don't actually see the predator. He just like <laughs> and blows up the body. Yeah. And they he takes the body because yep. that's what what the predator is. Yep. And he his guts are everywhere. And you're like, what happened? And now everybody thinks the girl killed him. You're like, the girl can rip out his guts. No. Come on, Weathers. You just just because you're a CIA and you don't trust anybody doesn't mean the girl can rip out guts. Right. Right. Yes. <sighs> Weathers, what are you gonna do? He doesn't. He trust. does redeem himself he, though. He, later. Does, he comes back. Yeah. It took it took him the whole movie to become a good he guy. Yeah. To remember but, what it was like. Right. To be part of a team. Right. So now they're freaking out. Right. Yep. And. Uh, we now we're like kind of traversing still and they still know they're being hunted, but they're trying to get through. And then the next scene is when, uh, the body gets just smoked with that. The That's the next big scene is the body getting smoked. Yeah. 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 We missed his favorite quote though. My favorite quote. In the home. Well, not okay. I have two favorite quotes in this, but that by this point, the body's taped up because remember in the firefight when they, took out all the bad guys, 150 bad guys. Right. The one guy looks at Jesse, the body and he goes, you're bleeding. He goes, I ain't got time to bleed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so good. This movie is, it's not as chock full of one-liners as say commando per no. se, but it does have some awesome Stick ones. Stick around. Yeah. That was a good one. Yeah, he yeah. threw the knife. Yeah. So, and that was in the firefight in the village. Yeah. yeah a lot yeah. of the laughs were in the village. Oh yeah. Cause as soon as the predator shows up, it just gets scary. It's no, it's not good. Yeah. Um, and, uh, so, so first the guy that makes all the jokes dies, he's gone. Then Jesse, the body dies. He gets, and he gets straight through the chest with that, whatever laser gun, right? Yeah. The laser gun that the predator shoots is just, it looks like a, uh, like a crappy webcam on his shoulder. Yeah. It's pretty sweet. That moves around with him and just shoots the world's most powerful gun bullet. Yeah. Light bullet missile, whatever that it's just a special effect that blows up bodies. Yeah. It was pretty sweet. Cause you remember when they in, they investigate his body and they're like, "There's no uh, powder burns, yes. there's no exit, there's nothing. no nothing. It's literally just like, vaporized his body, yeah. right? And it's if you notice in the one one near the end when he's looking around the forest, anytime his head moves, the gun, the webcam moves with him. Yeah, it was pretty sweet. Yeah, and you want that? Yeah, that'd be awesome. Come on, as a Halloween costume, this is the most integral part. Is this? This thing. That's what makes it on, official. On the shoulder. You know what this could have actually been too? Is like in the labyrinth. Remember how like the one little thing kind of moved around? <laughs> the little worm thing. <laughs> the little worm thing. So we're incorporating other movies. Those are callbacks, people. Fraser I'd Smith, rather watch. Uh, I'd rather watch the credits to Predator <laughs> than any scene in the labyrinth. It's a pretty good line. That's good. So uh, so he gets blown, and then uh, what's his name? Uh, Billy sees the um that the flash of the predator because all we've yeah. seen thus far is basically like you know when you're uh you're grilling at home or at, like a barbecue and there's the like the the vapor of the smoke comes up and there's that like clear propane that kind of comes up yeah, yeah 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 that's what the predator looks like he looks like a clear propane but you can see him like walk to the jungle but you really got to look closely because he's got the camouflage skills what we're, we're, i'm gonna but when we come back around to the end i want to talk about my complaints about this movie all right, you can just throw them out now. All right, let's just get to, let's get to okay. the awesomeness. All right, all right. we're getting through. All the right, awesome. so boom, two guys are now dead. Then Schwarzenegger's like, "Hey, man, we got to make a stand." No, but here's the thing: is they they then vaporize the entire woods with that Gatling gun. They just shoot every bullet they have into the ether. Yeah, yeah, that's true because they thought they saw it and they're like, "There he is." They could hear yeah. it, and then for like, it's ridiculous. For like a minute straight, they waste all the ammo they every have. Am, every they all of those Gatling gun bullets that could literally take out anybody. They're all gone because they mowed a forest down yep, with it. Yeah, mowed a forest down with it. But now they're losing guys bad. Yep. And, and then that's when Billy has that great line because he was like, oh, we're all going to die. Yeah. Remember, he was like, yeah. I'm scared. And he was like, you're not as scared of any man. He goes, whatever out there is not a man. Yeah. We're all going to die. Right. And then the best line of the movie, too, is they see the green thing, the green blood. And it's like, if it bleeds, it can die. Yeah, yeah. If yeah. it bleeds, we can kill it. Yeah. As well, if it bleeds, we can kill it. So... Now they have to make a final stand. They got to do their, their whole thing. So now they start making their way through the jungle and they start, they like, they talk about the, cause in this movie, they do a lot of this, like, a, Oh, the hand <laughs> signals. Yeah. Me and my brothers did that all the time. I the wanted woods. those hands. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so good. 
We all think we're in the military when we do like the. Oh yeah, yeah, it's the best. Yeah, it's sort of like uh, it, on the sidelines of football games, and we're just like. Yeah, well, we made this movie awesome for like a twelve-year-old boy. Essentially, it was the Goonies with guns. So it's like if you take two awesome things, it's yeah. an adventure. Yep. It's Goonies, guns plus aliens. <laughs> like, how can you go wrong? Goonies, guns. Aliens. aliens. Yeah. It's like, come on. And bro. one amazing alien. Probably the greatest alien in a movie ever. Yeah. In my opinion. Okay, aliens with, with Sigourney Weaver, good. But you you kind of knew that, that that's what was going on because they're in space. You don't anticipate seeing this crazy, badass, reptilian animal in a jungle. Dude, it was so cool. And it, they kept on revealing it perfectly. Like, first you don't see it at all. Right. And then you see flashes of it. And you see things from its point of view. And then you see it when it's bleeding. You see him stitch himself up. Yeah. But he's still got that helmet thing on. Right. And it's not until the end that you see. And his blood is green. And then he makes that like, ah! Sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. looks around and the birds fly out of the tree. So cool. Right. So now they make the final stand. And, and Bill Duke, who also in Commando. Who was awesome in this. Awesome in this. He starts going a little mad. Everybody starts going a little mad, obviously. Yeah. Bill Duke's so pissed that they killed his best friend. Yeah. Oh. That he's like, You're, I'm getting you. Yeah, we're going to kill this guy, right? Yep. So now it becomes sort of an almost every man for themselves situation because he kind of starts tracking the predator while the other guys are trying to flush him into him, right? Well, I think what happens is they, they make that final stand. They have that scene, right? And then the one guy gets crushed. Yeah. So now they have to get to the chopper to save his life. And Bill Duke's like, no, I want revenge. And then Carl Weathers steps up and that's when he redeems himself becomes the good guy becomes the good guy and he's like i'm gonna go fight with this dude you right. we're gonna essentially distract this whatever this is long enough so you guys can we're gonna kill him. get to the chopper right. and we think you know we see the i mean the, the part where he loses bill duke carl weathers loses bill duke so schwarzenegger takes the girl and the dude off the and, hurt dude the girl and, and billy and billy Right. Who's the coolest dude in this, I think. I really do think Billy that, the Tracker. You have a Superman crush on Yeah, Billy. he's so yeah. cool because like he's sensing everything. And do you remember he was like five five uh, footprints, U.S. Army boots? He like knew all knew the everything. tracks and stuff. And he's like, yeah. it's like it just disappeared. Because then that's the next breakthrough. The serious when question. When Schwarzenegger figures out, he goes, oh, he's using the trees. Yeah. Because remember, they can't track Can't him. track him. Okay. Anytime you were ever in the woods, could you track anything? No. Yeah, it's impossible. No, but there are people out there that know how to do it. Yeah. Like my friends that hunt and stuff. I'm like, that's so cool. It's ridiculous. And, yeah, in, and guys like in, in Crocodile, Dundee, Crocodile Dundee and Crocodile Dundee 2, those guys knew how to track the bad guys through the jungle and all that stuff. Could, so cool. I could never. I mean, My little I... brother used to act like he could track stuff. <laughs> hmm, look. And he would like, he'd look for branches that were stepped down and then he could find stuff. Like Really? We, yeah. Well, was somewhere in between? Yeah, we would just go on adventures in the yeah, woods. Yeah. We'd pack our canteens and Rambo knives. <laughs> so great. So much fun. Uh, for one Christmas, I asked for a machete after I watched this movie. I was like, Mom and Dad, I want a machete. And I got, I pulled the, the, the page out of the service merchandise, Mart. So tremendous. And I was like, I want this. And my mom was like, we're not buying you a machete. You're 11. Oh, come, come on. on. I can't have anything fun. I go to Pap's house and sharpen it on a <laughs> sharpener. And I'm like, <laughs> <house. laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's sharpened this forever. Like, what are you going to do with machete? Go in the woods and chop shit down. What do you uh, think? Be a man, think? mom. Yeah. It's time. Look at me. What are we going to do if somebody breaks in? That Take used to be the part of my life. Machete and just sh cut my Oh, chest that's when you know it's like going down. So he. So what happens is then Schwarzenegger. So we Weathers and Bill Duke go down. Bill Duke hides and he can see him. Yep. Weathers and he. I see you. I see you. He grabs Carl Weathers' hand and like Weathers kind of freaks out and he points right to the thing and now they see the yep. predator in his like yeah, invisible it, glory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could see that it's just camouflage. Oh, you know what it kind of looks like? Remember old 3D glasses? How you could see like they were yes. like messed up? That's kind of what it looked yes. like, right? Or like uh, those crappy like um, glass block windows people used to have oh, in their house oh, yeah. in like the basement. Yeah, yeah. Area. Or like in the bathroom, so you couldn't see boobs when right. sisters were taking exactly. showers. <laughs> Yes, Schmelville. Those kinds of windows. Those kinds of windows. So he, so they're, so they're seeing him, and then that's when they realize they're like, and they, they turn to each other and they look back, and he's gone. And then, well, I think that was the coolest, one of the coolest moments because that's when these dudes realize that it, it truly is real. Right. That there is this. It's not a group. Because remember the whole time Carl Withers is thinking it's two or three guys. Yeah. And then when the girl speaks English, she was like, there was these stories yeah about and like then like she tells it in the, the jungle the, came alive yeah the jungle came alive and then she's like she tells a story and she's like it means the venom in the jungle who eats the man we're like yeah, that's well, not yeah. that's a little weak yeah <laughs> but so then the predator he, bill duke has his arm like this and he's like looking up and then he doesn't see him anymore and then all of a sudden he sees the three red dots 
like yeah. the, of the laser yeah. scope. And then he's like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. And then he just gets crushed. He gets yeah. just blown up. Lit up. Blown yep. Right in the back of the head, blows yeah. his brains out. And that's right at, like right before Carl Weathers says, I'm going to go around back and try and flush him. Yep. Carl Weathers on a thing. And then we see the Predator come and he's got those claws. Right, which is basically yeah. a precursor to Wolverine. Although Wolverine existed way before. Way before, yeah. Was it still those like three? You know, kind of looks like you know when you got the sausage skewer, yeah, with yeah, the two yeah. fork, the two prong fork. Yep. So he gets him on the thing, and then he tr- Carl Weathers tries to turn around and shoot him, blows his arm off, and that's when the gun falls on the yeah, ground. Yeah, I forgot that scene totally. You forgot so, that? Yeah. The gun falls on the ground, and the, tr- the it's still blown because the trigger's hand is still there. Yep. And then he goes to try and take the other gun that he's got with his left arm. Yep. But he doesn't still get fighting. in time, and yep. just like, <laughs> right. So now they hear the screams. Schwarzenegger turns around. Billy's like, I'm making a final stand. He stands on the, the log crossing that huge thing. Yep. Schwarzenegger takes off with the wounded guy and the girl. Yep. And Billy makes the final stand. And as they, they cut to Schwarzenegger in the forest. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say, by this point, what I thought was really interesting is that the predator didn't had a chance to kill the girl, didn't kill the girl because she wasn't armed. Because hmm, he, he was just hunting yeah, other the hunters. Right. And then what I thought was really interesting, as this thing progresses, it becomes more and more primal. That you have this beast that has all the technology that we can't even comprehend. It can right. travel in between galaxies. It's got the laser thing. But then what's Billy do? He throws his gun down and he just takes out his machete and cuts himself. And it's almost like that blood draws him towards him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's gonna fight. He's gonna make a stand with the machete. Yeah. He, and then what Schwarzenegger does after this scene, it gets more and more primal. That's good. That's a good call. And everybody really said, "Well it's done, cool. Steve. Steve Simone, everybody. Let's hear it for him." I like this movie. <laughs> So Schwarzenegger hears Billy scream. We never see how Billy dies. He's just no. dead. Yeah. Um, but we do see that uh, he, so you hear Billy scream and then Schwarzenegger, whatever. And then he cuts back and the predator is climbing up a tree and just rips Billy's skull and spinal oh, so column gross. out of his body and screams. And then he's got all those skulls polished. It, yeah. 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 Like his trophies, his trophies. Cause he's a madman. Yeah. Uh, and then, so then the, the predator starts stalking Schwarzenegger, the wounded guy, and the girl. Obviously, the wounded guy's going to die. We know he's going to die. The predator takes him out. He's done. Yeah. Blows him up. Schwarzenegger gets hit in the arm, but it doesn't like take his arm off like no. it does Carl Weathers. It just wounds him pretty bad. The girl takes off running, and that's when he screams his famous line. Get to the chopper! Because yeah. that's what the girl's got to get to the chopper. Because now he's gonna yeah. he's gonna make his final stand. Now it's Schwarzenegger, the the best man that the that the United States, the world can fend off. Let's an go, alien. Dutch. Dutch is gonna take down the predator. Yeah, it's right? so good. Like this movie. Like now I'm starting to get excited yeah. just thinking about it, how it just boom, boom, boom. Now here you go. Here we go. Yep. And if you and as I'm watching it, I'm noticing. I'm like, geez, there's still 20 plus minutes left in this movie. Yep. That's how great of a final stay in this movie is. An entire yep. third act with just two things: a predator and the world's most perfect man. Yep. Seven time Mr. Olympia, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Six yep. time Mr. Olympia. I apologize. Uh and he falls down that thing, and all of a sudden, you see that camera angle when he comes off that cliff, and you were like, oh, he's dead. He's dead. He's yeah. going to fall, and he falls right into the water. Yep. You've seen him jump off a plane into water. Yeah, but what obviously. was so cool is like you see the body go like this, and then perfect, <laughs> perfect straight into the water. Again, for the second movie. And he now he's like, he gets tossed around. He's still injured, so he can't really swim that well. He gets tossed around, falls off a waterfall. another waterfall. Whatever. Swims to shore and is just like on in the mud. Yeah. And we know based solely on, that's good directing, good great camera. Directing. Do you know what's great about this movie? They What's do, that? they don't, everything's not on the nose. You have to figure some stuff out. Yeah. As you're, as you're watching it, you're like, oh, this is the alien and this is its technology. And oh, the mud, it can't see him in the mud. That right. sort of stuff. That's right. It's great. Uh, so then the predator falls down from wherever he can come from. Like yep. he basically jumped into the water he, he, and then Schwarzenegger looks and he's crazy. But Schwarzenegger is covered in mud at this point. Yep. And the, and the predator walks right by him, like right so by him, cool. doesn't see him. And, Sh- and Schwarzenegger says to himself, you can't see me, right? Yeah. Like, holy shit. He's got to cover himself in mud. And then that's when I went out in the backyard and started covering myself in mud <laughs> all the time. I mean, I came home the one time, mom was like, everything is ruined. I was like, we were playing Predator. She was uh, like, with This who? is what you do. Yeah. They couldn't see me, mom. Ma. I was fine. Mom. It's just... And the creek covering my whole body in mud. So great. Every time I, I know to this day, when you're in a lake and you ever stepped on in like the shoreline of the lake, when you get to like a little bit of the deeper water and your feet sink into the mud or like some of the mud stuff in like the mucky part of the bay in Ocean uh, City or dude, Seattle the mud or whatever, is the, best. the muds, and then you talk to yourself, this is where the predator would have been. <laughs> and it's the weakest. This is point. how I would take out yeah, the predator. Exactly. So now Schwarzenegger realizes to himself that 
he can he can avoid the predator by staying muddy, but he still has to make as a final stand. It gets. He still has to make a final stand. Yep. It's man versus beast, whatever. So he starts setting up all those weapons. All these weapons, making we, different sharpie sticks, dude. Traps. The stuff that he does that he makes. So cool. I'm telling you, that's the dream scenario. That's what we all tried to make as kids. If you have watched Predator and you want to go out into the woods, I don't know what if kids do that to these days. But when my brother and, and if I, you don't go, go it's do it. So much fun. We took like don't pretend Predator in the woods. We we got. I mean, we were like weaving grass together and like we made these things. So we thought we were going to work. I remember we like weave this grass. Dude, we together. had trip wires. We had oh, everything yeah. in the woods. Tri all these kinds of trip we wires. We would take fishing line and fishing hooks. Yeah. Like we're so lucky. Nobody really got hurt oh, because we would put. My little brother was the king of traps. <laughs> He'd even put traps in my house. Like when he was like four, five, six, seven years old, it was like Home Alone before Home Alone. My parents would like go to sleep and he'd sneak out and he'd be like, all right, dude, it's time to go protect the house. And I'm like, what are you talking about? It's in case bur burglars break in. And he would tie string to everything, fishing line hooks, knives swinging like this, like in a haunted house. He'd have the candle so it would burn through the rope at the right time. <laughs> My, complete chaos my brother would be like don't touch anything don't be an idiot and then he'd come around the corner and I would just like whack him with a tennis racket and be like, no, how about no. that yeah, how's this for a trap <laughs> I wasn't exactly the most creative kid let's be honest <laughs> we did build a tree house the one time in our, nice. in, in our backyard and Ben dropped a two by four on my head on accident and I was I was pretty fine I like I didn't get hurt that bad he hacks really Jim Duggan you with a two by four <laughs> <laughs> oh Plunk. Back to the yeah, back to the pro wrestling. He uh, we had those those moments of uh, we had people knocking down our mailboxes in our neighborhood, and Ben's like, we gotta we gotta make weapons, and he, <laughs> and then he just like took a rock with a racquetball racket and whacked it and hit me like point blank like right under the eye. And had oh to my gosh! Stitches. And we weren't again the Makugas. We we didn't think things through a lot. We no, I remember once my little brother. We had this. There was a. I guess it was technically probably somebody's backyard, yeah. but the stuff had overgrown it. So we thought we were in the middle of the woods yeah. and there was, we used to call it the ski lodge, but it was just like an, an abandoned like shed. Yeah. And my little brother had his BB gun. We we're like, don't shoot in here. He's like, why? What are you guys afraid? And I went tink, 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 tink. And it landed right underneath his eye. And then he just put his gun down. It's like, Nobody's telling mom. <laughs> That's tink, amazing. Tink, tink, tink. Right underneath his eye. Do your brother's voice again. Seriously? <laughs> The best. We love these movies so much. Oh, uh, it's amazing. So now he now he's he goes through his training montage, but instead of a training montage, it's a what can I create out of the wilderness montage? Yep. Which might be one of the most brilliant montages so cool. ever. And he's like, he throws a spear and it sticks in a tree. He's like, yeah. And he shoots up an actual an arrow. I don't know he where he got. A, yeah, he made bow and arrow. He had the knives. He's like burning it and like melting the wood perfectly. Yeah, it was the, cool. What is whatever. And let's just be honest. Wherever the predator went, he's ignoring a fire in the middle of the woods. That's the only problem that I kind of saw in that. It was like, remember he had that fire going because he was making the weapons? Oh, yeah. And so the Predator's just not around searching for the fire? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't think kind of a it. swing and a miss. But so now he's he's making his last stand. He walks out onto that promontory, basically the rock in Lion King out on that tree. He lights a torch and just screams at the top of his lungs after he's covered himself in mud and yeah. he's ready to fight the Predator. And now it's a it's a one on one match against a nine foot tall reptilian alien. And again, the world's most perfect man. Yeah. And Schwarzenegger gets the crap kicked out of him for a while. He shoots a bow, an arrow that has explosive on it. Yeah, but you know what was really interesting? As soon as they get down to the nitty gritty, the Predator goes primal too. Oh, he yeah. He puts his weapons down, takes off his helmet, Ks and then you see how ugly he is. And then Schwarzenegger drops and... the MF bomb. Yeah. You're you one ugly MF. <laughs> yeah. It's so good. Because uh, he doesn't. That might be some of Schwarzenegger's best acting because he doesn't say it like stick around or something stupid like that, right? Yeah. He just like is legit concerned about what this thing looks like. Because yeah, well, it's shocking because it's like he's coming in. He's not only fighting like the crazy, he's fighting an alien, yeah. dude. Yeah. And there's, it's what's unfortunate is there's a lot of people out there that, with really bad teeth that have the nickname Predator. Oh, that's terrible. That was, there was a girl I went to high school with oh, called her Predator. Oh, that's terrible. It was, I never called her to her face because I felt really bad, but she really did have really bad teeth. Oh, man. Lower fangs with like nothing. Oh, that's really wow. bad. Poor girl. Uh, but he went, and then they get into the again, and now it's a fight. Whatever. Yeah. Schwarzenegger finally gets him into that den. Of, yeah, and that's where your brother probably would have been like trying to draw you. So he wasn't trying to kill you, just like yeah. wanted you to fall into a hole or something, yep. right? And he falls in, and he and he crushes the predator, and that's yep. when we're like, oh crap. 
he he won. But yep. the camera stays on that thing, and you're yep. like, "Holy! Ca- is he going to come back from this? Yep. You can't kill the predator. Yeah, right? it looks like an immovable foe. Yes, Schwarzenegger gets to his feet, and he's destroyed. There's points when he's getting hit with that predator yes. hand. He's pre- predator is basically treating him like a mobster treats his wife. No, that's uh, not mean to say. It's just like. That's what they did in those movies. It was brutal. Yeah, not, right. We're not condoning anything, but right. he was just getting bitch slapped around. It was bad. Right. Blood is spewing everywhere. And they get to, uh, they, he gets over and you see the Predator's just green blood. And yes. He looks like Slimer. Spent change. Yeah, yeah it's exactly. It's, same thing as Slimer. So Perfect. much Slimer. Yeah. Right? He, Le- Ecto Cooler just everywhere. And the, the Predator starts, get, like, he opens his arm and he starts hitting Schwarzenegger realizes it's going to be a bomb and the Predator just starts laughing. <laughs> Maniacal laugh. And and Schwarzenegger takes off running and we just, and there's all this electricity like yeah. Big Trouble Little China yeah. guy with the electricity coming yes. in. And bomb him in it and it's just, it's our first look at a nuclear weapon that's on a person's arm. Oh yeah, that's exactly what would happen. It cuts the, like the chopper that they're in, it cut, finally cuts the general in the chopper and they're like, holy mother of God. There's a nuke that goes off in the jungle, for Christ's sake. Yes, right? that's where he must be. Well, looks like Dutch did it again. Yeah. Do, 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 do. And then it cuts, and there's helicopter dust everywhere. It's beginning of the movie, end of the movie, the same scene, but out walks Dutch, and he's he's still alive, and he's got the cigar. So great. Roll credits. World's, world's, listen, is this a guilty pleasure movie? I'd like to think so at points. Uh, yeah, there's some ridiculousness here, in it. Here's my, here's my thought, okay? An alien comes from all the way across the world. Yeah. By himself. Yeah. To hang out in the jungle. Yep. And kill people. Yeah. That's just it. Well, I think maybe that was like a hunting trip for him. Right? <laughs> like going up to the cabin in the woods, Did- like, oh, my wife's breaking my balls. I just want to drink a couple beers, maybe bag a deer. <laughs> that, That's what it was. That, all his buddies were on his foreign planet were like, yo, I hear Earth is great for hunting. He's yeah, like, yeah. This time of year? Oh, gorgeous. Yeah. And And there's that. Uh, there was my my point of Schwarzenegger making the weapons with the fire. Yeah, a little bit ridiculous to yeah. a certain extent. And all those weapons of bow and arrow. And yeah, all. yeah. I don't know if that's gonna happen again. Suspension of belief. Uh, the the <laughs> Bill Duke soliloquy. Yeah, just looking out in the distance, verbalizing every thought. That's a little absurd. So there are the the guilty movie pleasures of this movie. Yeah. So. I think on the scale of whatever we're going to say, this is one of the world's greatest movies with some of its most guilty pleasures. Yeah, I just think it's awesome. But yeah, there is certain ridiculous... But I think those ridiculous elements make it more awesome. Does that make sense? Well, and, you know, we could do Predator 2 in the future. Predator 2 is... I haven't seen that in years. Danny Glover takes the place of Arnold Schwarzenegger, basically, which is fantastic. Awesome. And it takes place in Los Angeles. So now the predator is in a cityscape and there's an end of it. That's just awesome too. Uh, Right. That's how I thought this movie ended. I forgot. (laughs) I was like, Oh wait, (laughs) wrong one. Yeah. Um, But the, it did spawn like the alien versus predator franchise, which I don't even know. I never watched any of those movies, so I, I don't really care, but I will say that this is one of those movies that anytime you're in the woods and you hear something like rustling around in the leaves, or if I see a squirrel or a leaves fall Absolutely. or anything, you look up in the trees because you hope you see a predator. For sure. Am I right? Yeah, definitely. Shmovo, there you go. go Dude, it was the pleasure. best. Predators. Uh, Steve, we have a weekend this weekend, perhaps. I mean, you're you at the Hollywood Improv this Yeah, week. I'm going to see. I I, uh, I might this, be on the show. We're not sure. Yeah, Friday, October 3rd. Hopefully, Josh and I. I'm for sure going to be at the Melrose Improv. We did a great podcast together we when did. we find out about what this guy was like growing up. Oh, so it's much fun. It's called Good Times. You did so much fun. I, yeah. I tell you what, I would talk about that. I could talk about this stuff forever. Obviously, you guys see how in Guilty Movie Pleasures, we always talk about our childhood yeah. and things like that. Uh, any more recent movies, we'll do that. And I guess... Uh, we we were talking about we wanted to see the movie The Equalizer. We haven't seen it yeah, yet. Yeah, I have we're to go see, see that. It. My buddy Johnny's in it. It looks yeah. anything with Denzel Washington whipping ass has got my awesome. money. So here's what here's here's the uh, for you, Schmoville. Recommend some Denzel Washington guilty pleasure movies. Okay. We'll make Cody Hall uh, our intern and the the Social Network King. He'll make a poll, and you guys can vote on what Denzel Washington movie you want us to do. With the Equalizer, and that's what movie we'll do next week. The poll should be up tomorrow, Wednesday, and it will close around Saturday, Friday or Saturday, so we, we know what you guys want us to see. Awesome. So we can watch it, and then we'll talk about that next week. We might bring in a guest. We're not sure, but Denzel Washington next week, uh, guilty movie, pleasure. Uh, I'm Josh McCougar. You can follow me on Twitter, at Josh McCougar, my, my YouTube channel, The Casual Mafia. Uh, my show, Between the Sheets, airs every Monday. And uh, Steve? Steve Simone, awesomesteve.com. There you go. We'll see you guys next time. Guilty movie, pleasure.
from producers Christian Harloff, Mark Ellis, and the entire Schmoes No Network crew. We would like to thank you for listening to Guilty Movie Pleasures. What's your pleasure? Special thanks to Kevin Undergaro and Maria Menounos, the author of Every Girl's Guide to Diet and Fitness in stores now. To watch or listen to other Guilty Pleasure movie episodes or other episodes of the Schmoes No Network shows, get movie news, or to join the conversation, be sure to visit schmoesno.com. I'm the Pit Boss, and this has been a presentation of the Schmoes No Network.